Hey, how are you guys doing? Me? Well, we're in the greenhouse. We're replanting stuff, and I'm going to show you why. All right, so we have Thai basil, dead. Genevieve's basil, dead. Rainbow Swiss chard, barely hanging on. I mean, that's on life support. Uh, most of my rosemary, done. Kale's okay. Uh, American spinach. There's nothing left of the American spinach. And two little parsley plants. And then we have dill. So what's happened is... So what's happened is I have a thrip infestation. I have never had to deal with these before. I think it's, at this point, probably the only pest in my greenhouse over the years that I've never had before. And I think it came in some soil. Thrips have basically wiped out my onions, the dill, the other plants I've already shown you. It's wiped out an entire flat of sweet peppers. They're, they're gone. I've literally had to restart them. Look, like, and, and I mean, I'm, I'm not even joking. I've had to restart a whole flat of peppers. So today we're just going to literally military run right through all the planting of everything I've lost. I don't have a choice. I got to have this stuff. I'm planting the garden in three weeks or so. And I know, and you're thinking to yourself, Sean, there's no way you're going to have this stuff ready to go in three weeks. I know, I know. So I don't have any other option. I got to start it now. I have a whole bunch of other things I still haven't even planted yet. Cucumbers and, and squashes and a bunch of stuff. I haven't even started those yet. I was going to do that today, but instead we're doing this. So basically the plan, start all these, grow them out and hold them in the greenhouse as long as I can before I put them out. Now, luckily, when I plant out the garden, I've got a whole three day weekend to do it. A bunch of that'll be infrastructure building and then I'll be able to plant out cucumbers and, and uh, cabbages and cauliflower and tomato and that sort of stuff. That stuff will be okay. I doubt these little seedlings will be ready by that point. So I will just hold them in the greenhouse or out in the backyard in the sun uh, until they're ready to plant and I'll just plant them in stages as I go. I, what other option do I have? So that's what we're doing, okay? Ready, we're gonna do this. So quick. we're gonna start off with Thai basil. The thing you need to know about planting basil is the seeds are really small. Like by really small, I mean really small. So when you plant your basil, basically all you need to do is a little tiny divot like that. Just real small. Drop your seeds in couple in each cell like that you really need to go see how light see how small those divots are with basil you need to go really really shallow on your planting like a quarter inch to maybe less than a quarter inch between an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch so the nice thing is, because this soil's super fluffy, right? You can just put them in, give it a bit of a water. And then we'll call the basil done. All right, there's parsley. We're growing triple curled parsley. I prefer the flavor of a curly parsley over a flat leaf parsley. And with parsley, you want a multi-seed each cell like that you want them about a quarter of an inch depth when you're planting them and it's okay to plant a bunch of parsley together you'll just end up with a much larger parsley plant just like that parsley done now you're probably noticing that I'm on the third so that's because I realized after I planted the Thai basil that I wanted more Thai basil because <laughs> I really enjoy it. And I want enough at the end of the season to save. So there's our curly parsley. Done. 
Next, we're doing American spinach. That's basically the stuff you find at the grocery store that you put in your salads and, and that sort of stuff. We're gonna do two rows of that. And I'm going to put two seeds in each. And then if need be, I will thin down to one. Because like I said, this is our Holy Mary planting here because we are running out of time. So I need to make sure that I get adequate amounts of these growing. So we'll just drop a few in each. It doesn't take long to do this kind of stuff when you're organized. Just get your seeds ready ahead of time. Get your trays filled. You know what? We're going to do three in each. Because. Why? Because we can. Bang, bang, bang. So like I said, it doesn't take long to do this. Okay. So there is our uh, American spinach. We'll just cover those up. And when I plant these in the garden, I'm, uh, I gotta make sure I plant them in a shady spot. So I'll probably plant them <coughs> behind my cucumbers or something because spinach bolts if it gets too hot and it's too sunny. So there's our spinach. Next, we are going to do, what's next? Cumin. Uh, this is going to be my third time trying to grow cumin. We had it going, but it didn't quite work out. So I don't know where I had a little cumin tag somewhere. I'll have to find that. Oh, maybe that's it right there. Nope. Kale. Chard. All right. Well, apparently I need to make up a new cumin card. But that's okay. And the point of growing cumin is... When it's ready, there's your cumin seeds, right? This is the stuff that gives you a smoky flavor. It's a powder. You cook it in your kitchen, all right? But it grows into this great big flowered plant, and I'm hoping that's going to bring the bees in. I'm also hoping I don't get stung because uh, I found out last fall that I have an allergy to bee stings that requires an EpiPen. Lovely. It's not like I spend a lot of time in the garden around bees or anything. Great. So we're just going to dump a bunch of seeds in each. And like I said, thin if need be. And then these flowers will eventually go to seed, provide me all new seeds, and then I won't have to buy cumin next year. And then it'll also be acclimatized to growing in our environment. So it's win-win. Plus, a lot of the extra seeds I'll just save for next year, and then the rest I will train into, uh, or I will ground right down into a spice. All right, I got to make a label. Next, we're doing mammoth dill. And these flower heads are humongous. We're talking like 10 to 12 inches across. So, but burpee puts them in plastic packages that you can't reclose. So burpee, do better. So we're gonna do some mammoth. We're gonna do two rows because I want lots of dill because we're gonna do lots of cucumbers this year. And I also am going to sacrifice some of the dill plants and I'm just gonna harvest the whole thing and I'm going to um, bring some of the dill fronds home and dehydrate them so I can use them over the course of the winter time. So there's our, our mammoth dill. We'll just stick that right in there. So if you're looking for a good variety, mammoth dill is a great variety. I grew some of that last year. And then... Ducat dill 
I've been growing this one for a long time. So here's that Ducat dill. Seeds look a little different. Couple in each. Just like that. It ain't rocket science. Yep, that's my dog. That's Thor. Being a good boy because someone's at my front door. All right, I gotta go check. Sorry about that interruption. My kids are not allowed to answer my front door. So they just wait for me to get up there while the dog barks his fool head off. You have to be safety. You have to be safe these days. Home invasions are on the rise and there's nothing. My kids are not gonna be able to stop some punk who tries to push his way into the house. So that's why they're not allowed to open up the door. Got to teach your kids properly. Got to teach them about safety. Not everybody out there is, wants to be their friend. There are a lot of people out there these days with malicious intent. So train your kids right. Okay, this is one of my favorites. Bunching onions. And the one thing, if you're going to grow bunching onions, that you need to know is, well, there's a couple things. Um, you want them about half a centimeter deep when you plant them. So maybe six centimeters or so. And secondly, don't plant them individually. They prefer to grow in little clumps. That's why they're called bunching onions. I know it kind of sounds silly though, doesn't it? But um, they prefer to grow in clumps. So I do between That's it. So I'm going to use all of these seeds in these 12 trays. Or most of them. Maybe not all. But I'm putting between 5 and 10 in each cell. I'm not even being picky. I mean, I'm literally just grabbing finger pinches and putting them in. And they're totally happy growing in clusters with their buddies. So don't worry about it. For as an example, when you go to the grocery store, okay, and you see bunching onions being sold, it's always a little cluster held together with an elastic band. And the reason for that is that little cluster that you're buying that's wrapped in that elastic band, they were grown together. We'll just pour all those back in. Gonna drop some on the floor for sure. So you can see, I wasn't joking when I said I put lots of seeds in each hole. And then we just put our little tag in I had that. Oh, well, doesn't matter. I'll find it after. And then we just cover them over. Like that. And because I want these, so generally I don't fertilize little seedlings, okay? Um, usually because they're not in these cells long enough that I need to worry about. But what I am going to do is I am going to be fertilizing them with both of these, kelp and fish emulsion. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I need to give these uh, seedlings the best chance of growing as quickly as possible before they have to go out into the garden. So. We've got that and that and that. Now we just give everything a good watering, settle it in. Like that. So here we go for all of that. It's ready to go. It's all watered. I'm not fertilizing today. 
I'm going to give it about two days, three days before I add a little bit of nutrients. It's not even really, I wouldn't even call it fertilizer. I would just mostly call it nutrients. And then we put the lid on. And if you're wondering why I'm using, so basically here's a full size label that I make and I just cut them in half. And if you're wondering why I'm only using halves, it's because these labels will stick way up. You know, they'll stick way up in the air and the lid doesn't sit right. So I just cut them in half and then See, that lid goes on just like that. And now I'm just gonna let these grow and wish them happy growth, because they need it. And um, grow plants. And um, they have give or take a month before I'll be putting them outside. So that's about all I'm gonna give them. So that's it. I mean, you still have time just like I do to get stuff going. Uh, you, you can also direct seed stuff in the ground. Don't get me wrong. Um, there are certain things that, that you can definitely direct seed, um, but there are certain things that I want to grow ahead of time because I'm not at the garden every day. I'm only there once a week, and I can't water everything once a week. And if you have seeds in the ground and you're not able to water them and we're not getting rain, those seeds are just going to bake in the sun and they're not going to grow right. So this is why I'm going to do some seedlings here, but there will also definitely be some direct planted stuff in the garden. Like we're going to do a thousand carrots and and all kinds of other stuff so but we're just getting started here so have an awesome day grow good food hope you don't have to grow it twice like i am <laughs> and um have an awesome day love you guys see ya